Hi there, I have a letter cast here. You may know me from my stories, you may know me from YouTube, you may know me from your local coffee shop, or maybe you don't know me at all. Regardless of how our paths have crossed, I just want to say, welcome to my podcast, Indie Authors Connect. This podcast is for any listeners looking to expand their support for small name creators and discover tomorrow's bestsellers today. In each episode, I introduce you to new indie authors from a wide range of genres in fiction and nonfiction, as well as graphic novels and webcomics. Each episode features a new author. Learn about their works and subscribe for a chance to receive a copy of our next interviewee's book completely free. I will be posting a new episode on the first Friday or Saturday of every month, and you can find me on whatever platform you use to listen to your podcasts. Each episode will also be available in video format on YouTube, in text format on my blog at iLettercast.com, and if you want the links to all of those, just subscribe to my weekly newsletter at iLettercast.com, under the link titled Get Free Books. You can also subscribe to my Instagram account at i underscore lettercast, my Twitter account at iLettercast, and my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash iLettercast. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Iva Lettercast, and I'm your host here at the Indie Author Connection podcast. Today, we are going to be interviewing Tracy Krause, who has been writing in the inspirational romantic suspense genre for 12 years um, and currently has 11 novels out plus nine stage plays and several nonfiction and children's books. So she's something of a jack of all trades, which is spectacular. I love interviewing people like this because I want to hear your whole story. Um, so on that note, Tracy, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience and give us a little bit about you. Well, first of all, I just really want to thank you for having me here on your, your podcast. It's a real honor. Um, we just met a few weeks ago. And so thanks so much for, for having me. Um, yeah, yeah. As you said, I'm a bit of a chameleon. Um, I think my, my first love is um, novels, like writing or romantic suspense. And I started that uh, 35 years ago. <laughs> so um, my, my first daughter was a baby. I was actually a visual artist. So I went to university for visual art. And, um, and then I just found it really difficult with a baby to drag out all the paints and, and whatever. Um, <laughs> I started writing instead. So she was having her naps. And I borrowed this old typewriter from my mom, because, you know, back in those days, 1985, that's what you did, you used a typewriter. <laughs> and um, the habit just stuck. Like I just loved writing so much. Uh, not that I've quit doing visual art, but I think writing has become my real love um, as far as that creativity goes. So yeah, I've been writing for a really long time, but you know, the first 15 years or something, I never shared with anybody. Like I was a closet writer. It was like very frightening, the thought of sharing. And then, you know, when I did take those first steps, um, it was devastating, let me put it that way. <laughs> yeah. You no, know, because in those days, like it, it, the early 2000s, the only way was to find a traditional publisher and an agent. So, you know, I, I did hundreds of submissions and got hundreds of rejections. Some of them were very good with lots of feedback. And so I learned a lot and I learned to have a really tough skin but I guess I'm kind of stubborn because I just kept at it. And finally in 2008, I did uh, secure my first uh, book contract, a traditional deal with uh, my first book, which was called, And the Beat Goes On. And I always get a lot of Sonny and Cher <laughs> comments. <laughs> Yep. But um, that was kind of the start of it for me. So I've been really fortunate and I've had an agent and he and I have since parted ways. Um, amicably he's a lovely man but uh, I found these days things have changed so much in the industry and um, so once my my contracts um, started coming back the rights started reverting back to me I started self-publishing so that's where I'm at right now um, and then also I write stage plays as you said because I my real job I was a drama teacher that's awesome so, yeah I taught theater for you know, 20 years, and I wrote plays for my own students. And some of them have been fortunate enough to find homes in uh, publishing houses and that. So that's how I got into the stage plays. And um, yeah, so these days, I'm mostly self publishing, I do still have a few titles that are with, you know, the respective publishers, because they're good to me. But most of them, I find 
um, you know, you just make more money. <laughs> that sounds yeah. really, <laughs> that sounds so callous. It's not all about the money. No, uh, you know, there is this, there's this, I guess, romanticized idea of being the starving artist and there is nothing wrong with wanting to actually be able to live off of your work and to maybe even profit like beyond just living, right? Because we all have goals and aspirations. I think it's great that, <laughs> that you're making financially the right decisions, you know, for you and your work. Yeah, and I mean, it is about the control as well. You know, um, that first book that I mentioned, I, I changed, when I republished it, I changed the title to Conspiracy of Bones, which to me makes more sense in terms of what it's about. Um, it's a evolutionary conspiracy theory. So, you know, um, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. And I'm, I'm just living the dream. I don't know. I mean, I'm not a, making a lot of money by any means, but I'm satisfied with where I'm at and I'm enjoying uh, my writing and I still have lots more books to write. So, yeah. That's awesome. Um, so then as an author, uh, since we just kind of talked a little bit about like, you know, your process in publishing and kind of how you got to where you're at. Do you have like a specific goal with what you're trying to do with your books? You know, like something that drives you to keep writing, keep putting content out there. Cause like you said, like I would, I don't have personal experience with this, but uh, I have heard that even more than traditional publishing, self-publishing is pretty brutal in the sense that like, sometimes you can have something that is excellent, excellent work and just nobody reads it. So like what kind of keeps you going, you know, with stuff like that? Yeah, well, I mean, that's so true. And it's all about finding your audience, I guess. And so again, that's, I'm really grateful to be on your, your uh, podcast um, because every little bit helps, right? And it's true, you know, you can publish what you think is really great. And hopefully they're, hopefully people like my books, you know, the people who actually do read them seem to, but it's really good. You know, <laughs> it's like, it'd be, it would be nice. And that's where, you know, when you have a traditional person behind you, you do have that advantage, I guess. Um, but you know, the mark, the, the world has just changed so much. So, um, you know, my main goal is to entertain, I guess, first of all, and then to encourage people because I do write inspirational um, fiction. So there is a strong faith element. Um, but I, I'm a little bit um, on the edge of what would be considered traditional Christian fiction because I like to include, I'm nothing graphic by any means, but I do like to include what some people call gritty elements. Oh, <laughs> and, okay. A little bit know, okay up in there. <laughs> a little bit, you know, and it's because, I mean, that's my own that's my own background. Like I didn't grow up in the church and I didn't grow up in a, in a, a fairy tale home, you know, where everything was perfect. And even now as, as a Christian, I don't, I don't believe that life is running through a park with a picnic basket, you know? I agree. <laughs> and, um, and so for me, that's just, you know, I just want to be real, right? So I do have authentic characters and, um, and like, even if they're, you know, so-called Christians, it doesn't mean they're perfect. Like, you know, maybe there's uh, some extramarital sex happening or whatever, because you know what, that's real. Yeah. Um, and I have been in, my husband was a pastor for many years and I've been in ministry and I know that's real. Like that's real life. People, people who put on a fake mask and say, oh, I'm perfect because I'm a Christian and I go to church. Well, that's just not, that's not reality. No. Like the, the Christian community has just as many uh, skeletons in their closet, if I put it that way, yeah. than everybody else. And, um, and so for me, that's important to, to have that message come across. So my work is not squeaky clean. Like I said, it's not graphic. Um, and that's why my tagline is fiction on the edge without crossing the line. But, you know, I, I used to have in my head, would I let my dad read this? <laughs> that's a good one. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, he was a pretty progressive guy and he wasn't squeaky clean either. So I, I felt like that was a pretty good marker. If my dad could read it, then I'm okay. <laughs> That's awesome, though. It's, it's actually funny. So I uh, I don't write romance. I write um, like science fiction and science, science fiction horror. 
and my bio dad and I don't talk, but um, one of my partners, I call his parents, mom and dad. And our dad is a, he's a huge, huge sci-fi fanatic. And so it's funny because when I write, I actually picture him as my audience. So I do something similar, but in a different fashion. Wow. That's really cool though. <laughs> Can I interject? Cause I am a huge sci-fi fan as well. Yeah. And I'm just in the middle of writing. It's so frightening. I've just finished writing my first science fiction. It's a YA book. Okay. So it's the first time I've ever written YA, first time I've ever written science fiction. And I wrote it in first person, um, present tense, because I think that's maybe more current. It is. <laughs> that's all the way is doing it right now. Yeah. And it's, and it's frightening for me. And part of the reason is because I love uh, science fiction so much mm -hmm. that I never felt I could write it properly. Like I yep. was yeah I wouldn't do it justice you know that was actually what held me back for the longest time when it came to writing just like regular science fiction when it came to writing horror I didn't think anybody would want to read the stuff that I wrote but when it came to science fiction it was like there is no way I could compare to like some like dune right like yeah how how can I write something that good but you know what what you're doing right now I think is something that every writer needs to like get into their into their brain and into our hearts really is that our stuff is worth reading hmm. whatever we put out there is worth reading and it's worth writing even if nobody reads it you know I think it's awesome yeah hey very true and you know back to sort of the question is I just I feel compelled to write so even if as you said even if nobody's going to read it I, I'll still be writing <laughs> so That's you know beautiful. My children all grew up with that. It's like, leave mom alone. She's writing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and speaking of horror, I actually enjoy horror. Yeah. And that's another thing, you know, that there is such a thing as Christian horror. I don't know if you knew that. Yep. Yep. But, uh, Frank E. Peretti is one of them that I grew up oh, reading. Oh, he's, he's, he is my favorite author of all time. And, yeah. and um, Ted Decker was another one. But I Ted mean, Decker, those, yeah. those aren't even very frightening. No. I'm talking well, real. That was as scary as I was allowed to read back in the day. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I've been on a panel uh, a few years ago. I was part of a, a, a judge on a, um, it was like a contest for writers. And so I volunteered for that horror genre because it's like nobody else wanted to, right? And it's like, pick me. I want to read the horror. I want to read all the paranormal. And yeah. Yeah, it, was, it was really, really fascinating. I just loved it. It was good. So um, you actually wanted to talk about your book today uh, called Three Strand Cord. Right, I got that right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's one that came out a few years ago, but I thought it would be a good one to maybe highlight on your show. Um, it's the first in a three three book series, okay. um, and each of the three books have three characters. So there's three main characters in each in each book, which is a little bit different. So it's written from three points of view, but the storylines kind of weave together, I guess. And uh, I was partly inspired to do that with, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, an author named Maeve Finchie. Mm -hmm. um, she used to do that, where she'd start a story in one point of view, and then all of a sudden the next chapter was from someone different. And so it makes for an interesting, like you're seeing the story unfold and the plot continues, but it's always sort of from someone else's point of view. And I think it's a lot more kind of like how we watch movies or maybe TV shows too, right? It's, yeah. It's not it's always from one point of view. It's a really creative way to um, to give different perspectives and to kind of like add suspense. I'm not entirely sure like what your storyline is on this particular book, but there are things that one character might know that you don't reveal because you're you're looking at it from a different character's perspective. I always like that. Yeah. yeah. So all three books are based have three separate characters that drive the plot, but the first book, Three Strand Cord, is about three friends who um, met in boarding school, and um, of course, you know, the trope, they're all very different, but they're, you know, one is the rich kind of like bimbo and, and one is the practical, one is the smart girl, you know, so I realize there's those things happening, but they're adults now and the, the bimbo, if I can call her that, um, Charisse, is always in love, right? She's always got a new boyfriend. And so this time she's fallen for her, this exotic Italian man. So okay. she runs off to Italy with her Italian lover and she has to get her two friends to cover for her um, 
in order for her to do that. So that's kind of the, that's sort of the, the basis of where the story begins. But then of course, in, in doing so, um, they, the other two friends end up, you know, getting into all kinds of trouble because they are, they're, you know, covering up for her and, uh, yeah. oh, there's, there's kidnapping, there's drug deals, there's, you know, um, there's love triangles there's like <laughs> you know uh, there's sexy cowboys i mean i don't know there's a whole lot of stuff going on um but That's it's awesome. a, it is a, a co sort of complicated but in the end i mean the real the real thrust of the story is that these three friends um their their bond is stronger than all of those things right uh, than international espionage <laughs> or, or or other men who might come in and all those things um so that's kind of the the you know the basis but it's it's a it's a i like it i mean of course i do right i wrote it but <laughs> told, it's very interesting intriguing exciting um it sounds like it has a lot of intrigue for sure yeah yeah and i try to do that like i sort of think my books are mostly romantic suspense so there's usually a suspense element and some kind of danger and things it's not just all about uh the romance yeah so um but yeah it's um uh, it's the first in in a three book series as i said and then it continues the story continues with uh, blood ties is the second book and tempest tossed it's almost wow. a tongue twister. Tempest is it tossed. and is it um it's three different characters in each of the books well kind of no it's still it's still based around those three those gotcha. three women, um tempest stella and sharice and that was my clever little um yeah acronym Three strand chord TSC Tempest Stella Cherise. Yeah. That's awesome. Too much, too much in my head. <laughs> oh, okay. So I actually know plenty of writers who that's that's how they structure their their titles or the. Um, I have one friend, uh, Tai Hakobo, and she actually, um, her series is called Spark, and then each book has that first letter um, for the title. So S P A R K. It's a five book series. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. I love creative titles like I'm, that. I'm sure I, yeah, I'm not the first person to think of it, but I thought it was rather clever. So yeah, anyway. no, very clever. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I am happy to give, I, I have a copy here and I know you'll be giving one away at some point. So that's the, the first book in the series, Three Strand Chord. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, basically the, what I'm going to do every month is I'm going to, from all the email list subscribers, I'm going to do a random generator and uh, select one to receive a, a signed copy or an e-copy, depending on uh, what everybody's different platforms are. Yeah. Um, and I think that would be a great way to sort of like get your guys' names out there. I will cover the cost of shipping and everything, so you don't have to worry about any of that. Oh. Well, you don't have to do that. It's, okay. it's part of the cost of doing business in my and so yeah I'm happy to do an ebook too if people prefer that but you know sometimes it's kind of nice in this day and age something different to actually get the physical copy. to get the physical one with a with a little thank you and a yeah. um so on that note on the topic of like getting books um where can our audience find your work well um the best place is to go to my website so it's simply my name tracykraus.com and i do have to say there's no e in tracy and there are two s's in kraus because <laughs> my name can be spelt like 10 different ways you know so it's t-r-a-c-y-k-r-a-u-s-s uh dot com and then uh there you'll find you know like pages links to everything all my various books and stuff and also um you'll find links to all my social media so i'd be happy to you know talk to people on facebook or instagram or twitter or whatever awesome all those places <laughs> awesome. yeah and uh, oh also um if people sign up for my email newsletter as you were mentioning i do have uh they get a copy of my book called play it again which is uh, it's a full-length novel but it's um set in the 80s and it's the 1980s and it's um a, a rock and a rock and roll person meets an accountant and they fall in love and it's 
<laughs> That's beautiful. I yeah, love it. It's, uh, it was my first book I ever wrote. So as I, that was the one I started writing when I was clacking away when my first daughter was a baby. But, uh, you know, it's like, what is the most, in my mind, boring job? Because <laughs> I hate numbers. And then, you know, we have this rock and roll junkie over here and, you know, <laughs> so. That's yeah. awesome. Um, well, if you could say anything to our audience, to your readers, um, what would you say to them? That is a tough question. And I, I, yeah, um, you know what? Just be yourself, I guess, is the biggest thing. Um, and there's room for everybody in this world. And, you know, check out my books and maybe, maybe you'll like them. I don't know. <laughs> What else could I say? Like life, life is good, but it's it's uh, it's messy too. So I think that's what makes good stories is uh, a little bit of the mess involved. I agree. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today, um, Tracy Krauss. You are spectacular, um, and I look forward first off to reading all your books and to hopefully having you again later on when you have more stories out. Um, to talk about any type of new stuff you've got, um, your science fiction, for example. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm considering bringing that one out on Kindle Vela. I'm still investigating that new platform, but I thought perhaps that might be. Um, my target was to have it out this summer. So, we'll yeah, see. that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. And um, yeah, and thank you everybody for listening uh, to episode four of Indie Author Connection. Um, and remember, you met her here first on Indie Author Connection, where we show you tomorrow's bestsellers today. Right on. See ya. Bye. If you enjoyed today's interview and want to hear more by other indie authors, feel free to hit that subscribe button. We post new content every month on Indie Authors Connection, as well as access to free and paid content by myself and the other authors interviewed here on the show at ilettercast.com. That's I-L-E-T-T-E-R-C-A-S-T dot com. If you subscribe to our newsletter, you actually get a weekly update on all of the content that I'm working on, as well as plenty of free and paid content by other awesome small indie creators. And if you want to be featured, just shoot me an email through that website. Thanks again for listening, and hey, you're wonderful. <laughs>